إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم جعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that there is no God worthy of worship or unconditional obedience except for Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace and blessings upon His final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His family, His companions and those that follow until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, many times we say things to our dear friends and we say things to our spouses, we say things to our parents, we say things sometimes to close friends that indicate that without you I would be nothing. And we all have these different statements, whether it's in Arabic or Urdu and English or whatever it is, that without you I would be nothing. Where would I be without you? You are my sanity. Right? And it depends what language you're in and then the, the mujamala, the exaggeration gets more and more and more and more. And while it's good to be nice to people and it's good to express shukr to people and gratitude to people, unfortunately many times there's a lot of truth in that statement. That a person is completely vulnerable and is completely at the mercy of another human being. And many times when we talk about hardship and when we talk about making dua and when we talk about patience, we talk about that when someone dies in the community. We talk about that when you're going through a real hardship in your life. How to deal with the loss of a job, how to deal with the loss of a child, how to deal with this, how to deal with that. Then all of a sudden you have to remember sabr. All of a sudden you have to remember how to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of a sudden you have to remember that if, I'm, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with me, then this hardship is actually a means of reward and elevation for me on the day of judgment. But there are the daily struggles. There are the daily things. Having a rough day at work. Getting a little tough with, you know, your finances getting a little harder. You know, your, your tax seasons come around. The economy is getting tougher. My business is suffering. I'm having issues with my wife. I'm having issues with my child. I'm having issues with this person. This person insulted me. While I was at the gas station, you know, the, the clerk, you know, looked at me in a funny way. This person, you know, I was at TS, with TSA in the airport and they searched me and they humiliated me. Right? And the first thing that you think about doing is pulling out your cell phone and calling as many people as you can to tell them about what kind of day you just had. Right? But you place someone or you put yourself at the mercy of another human being who has their own set of problems, who has their own difficulties, and unless you are also serving as a source of comfort for them, they really don't want to hear it from you. And when they listen to your hardships and difficulties, it's because they also want to be able to come to you with their baggage. And what it creates is a, an atmosphere of complaining. 
an atmosphere of implicit displeasure with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we call in the Arabic language as shakwa, complaining. Unfortunately with us, we don't usually do shakwa, we do whining. You know, it's not just complaining, it's whining. It's complaining in a way that I'm displeased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in essence, when you really think about this, an Imam ibn, ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he was talking about a man who was, who was always telling other people about his problems, always complaining to them about his situation, about how, how life is really getting tough for me. And Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah, what did he say? Shakawta man yarhamuka ila man la yarhamuk. You complained about the one who has mercy upon you to one who has no mercy upon you. Right, that person, you know, he has his own set of problems. She has her own set of problems. And subhanAllah, we're consistently, you know, taught that you need people in your life. And yes, to an extent, you do need people in your life. But when it comes to complaining, when it comes to speaking about the issues that you're going through, dealing with the everyday obstacles and hardships. And Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and you know, Umar radiallahu anhu never beat around the bush. He was never diplomatic. Right? There was no such thing as diplomacy with Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He told it how it was all the time. So he was talking to a man who was always complaining to people, right? Not complaining as, why did Allah do this to me? And why, did, why am I going through this? And why do good things happen to bad people? And bad things happen to good people? He wasn't complaining in that way. But implicitly, when you, come, when you keep on talking about how miserable your life is because your laptop broke down, or you dropped your iPhone in, 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 a, in a fish tank or something like that, when you're consistently speaking that way, you're expressing displeasure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially when you go telling other people about it. So Umar bin Khattab said, Listen, لَيْسَ فِي الشَّكْوَةِ إِلَّا أَن تُحْسِنَ صَدِيقَ أَوْ تُشَمِّتَ عَدُوَّةً SubhanAllah. He said, you're not getting any good out of your complaining except that you're either depressing someone who actually cares about you, or you're making someone who doesn't like you pretty happy or, or pleased with your own misfortunes. Right, you're either, you're either pleasing someone, you're either calling someone who was finally having a good day, maybe he got a pay raise at work, maybe you know, he finally ha saw the light with his own spouse, and then you call him and you say, my wife is terrible, she's horrible. You know, she didn't cook on time today, and she didn't do this, and my thobe wasn't clean when I went to Fajr, and start complaining about her, and then that guy has to get depressed now. He has to feel sad. He feels obligated to feel sad because you're complaining to him and you're his friend, you're his brother, you're his confidant. You're the guy he looks to, right? And at the same time, if someone doesn't like you, while you're complaining about your situation, although they're not you know, outwardly expressing joy with your misfortune, you're thinking to yourself, well, alhamdulillah, I don't like him anyway. He deserves it. You deserve it, right? But at the end of the day, you gained absolutely nothing from it, except that you complained about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah was willing to hear your complaint the whole time. You don't have to wait for someone to die to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, grant me sabr. You don't have to wait for a major tragedy in your life. Daily shakwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that doesn't express, dis express displeasure with your situation, but in a way of trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is both capable and willing to listen to me and help me at any time. And I want you to think about this advice for a moment. There's an authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad. It's a very powerful hadith. You know, we, know, we have hadith Qudsi, which obviously is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking, and the Prophet sallallahu are narrating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, but it's not Quran. And obviously we have the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa But what makes this hadith unique? This hadith is a hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam. But not the hadith of Jibreel, which is what is Iman, what is Islam, what is Ihsan. No, no. Jibreel alayhi salam advising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's an authentic hadith. Outside of his capacity of delivering the wahi. And we know that because he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad. And when Jibreel alayhi salam is addressing him this way, he's showing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, look, this is advice from me to you. SubhanAllah, the best of the angels giving advice to the best of human beings and the best of all creation. Ya Muhammad, and he wants to give Rasulullah some, some advice. He says, Ish ma shit fa innaka mayyit. Live however you want to, but know that you're one day going to die. 
وَحْبِبْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Love whoever you want, but know that you're going to be taken away from that person. You're going to be separated from that person. Either they're going to die first, or you're going to die first. Or long distance, whatever it is. You're going to be separated from that person. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌ بِهِ Do whatever you want, but know that you will be granted exactly what you have done. إِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌ بِهِ You will find on the Akhirah the reward for your deeds. Right? You will find the payment of your deeds. So go ahead and act and do the deeds that you want to do. But know that one day you have to be held accountable for them. And listen to these last two advices. And this is what I want to focus on because of the, 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 you know, the shortage of time. He says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنِ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ says, know that the nobility of a believer is his standing up in Qiyam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his nobility, and his sense of dignity is being independent of people. SubhanAllah. Listen to how powerful this advice is when you take them together. Now obviously if you break up this, this hadith could be five khutbahs in a row. I think everyone recognizes that each advice is loaded. But specifically, let's look at the last two and tie them together. Know that the nobility of a believer is his standing up in Qiyamul Layl. Praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, telling, to Allah, telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what Allah already knows, but in a way of placing his dependence upon him. And his sense of dignity is being independent of the people. Now, this is something that's problematic because if you, if you take that last statement in particular, does that mean that we can't ask for help? Does that mean that we shouldn't, you know, if we're in a bind, we can't ask other people to help us out? To an extent, yes. To an extent, yes. Because Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, بَيَعْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَلَّا أَسْأَلَ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا I took an allegiance, a pledge to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never to ask anyone for anything. Now of course Abu Bakr is a special person who has an elevated standard, right? The Prophet sallallahu sets a different standard for him. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, الْيَدُ الْعُلْيَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْيَدِ السُّفْلَى that to have the upper hand is always better than having the lower hand. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Ulya hi al-Munfiqa. The Ulya, the higher hand is the one that's giving. The one that's always giving. Was sufla hi al-Sa'ila. And the lower hand is the one that's always asking. Sometimes you're in a bind. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need to go to people. And whether it's emotional or it's financial or whatever it is, sometimes you have to ask people for help. But a person should try his best to put all of his needs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to abandon what people have. And that's a problematic concept because then you say, well wait a minute, how are we going to know who's poor? How are we going to know? Does that mean that we can't give sadaqah? What about zakah? What about sadaqah? And this is the perfect system that Islam created. That the Muslim who has is supposed to go look for the one who needs. And there's a difference between being in need and not going out and begging the people and becoming vulnerable and saying, help me, help me, help me. Between that type of person and a person who's in need and other people can see that and they come to him or her to help. There's a total difference, unfortunately, because of the imperfection of the way that our society is set up. Obviously, we can't apply that wholeheartedly. So sometimes, yes, you have to ask. But let's talk about emotional vulnerability. You know, subhanAllah, whenever you become dependent on one person, or you become dependent on a group of people, you are at their mercy. SubhanAllah, you weaken yourself. You start to have a low self-esteem. You start to have a defeated mentality. And you get used to being a bum. You know the whole saying of teach a man how to fish or give him a fish? You give him a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a year. Right? You get used to that sometimes. You get used to, oh man, I'm having a rough day. I need to go talk. I need to complain to this person. I need to call up this person. Oh, I need money. I, need, I know I can always go to this person. I know I can always go to that person. And you're complaining. And you're making yourself vulnerable and weak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yuridu lak al yusr. Allah wants to make things easy for you. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, he says very beautifully, he says that people go to the door of this person, and that person, and that person. This Malik, and that Malik, this king, or that king. But Malikul Muluk, the king of kings, has his door always open for you. And you only go there in times of tragedy. 
No. When you develop a habit of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in a way, not in a way that expresses displeasure with Him. And a shakwa as Imam al Qayyim rahimahullah is one of the most beloved forms of dua. It's the dua of Ya'qub alayhi salam. Ashku huzni wa bathi ila Allah. I'm not going to worry about you. I'm going to complain about my grief and my sadness to Allah. You know what I'm going through, but I'm going to, I'm going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyub alayhi salam. All of the stuff that happened to him. He complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was shakwa. But the way he complains, Masani al dur wa anta arhamur rahimin. Oh Allah, my Lord, harm has struck me and you're the most merciful of those who have mercy. Just a few words, it showed his attitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, you know about my situation. And you know, it's good to talk about your situation with Allah because we as human beings naturally, we like to talk about our problems. We like to talk about what we're going through. You know, subhanAllah, many times, you know, it was funny because I was once watching um, uh, and, and a show on, on psychiatry and things of that sort. And there was one person who was talking about, you know, basically, if you think about it, and this is not to insult any psychiatrist because your work is important, because there is serious clinical depression, no doubt about it. But sometimes people go there without really needing them, and they don't need the antidepressant, they don't need that. But you know what? I want to go inside that office and sit on that nice couch and lay back and complain for an hour and then pay $600 at the end and tell you, you are the greatest psychiatrist that exists on the face of the earth. You're such a good listener, right? And brothers, if you want to try helping your wives, sometimes when your wives complain to you, don't try to offer them solutions. Just listen. <laughs> listen. SubhanAllah. We as human beings naturally want to be heard. We naturally want someone to hear us and listen to us. Right? That's just the way that we are. That's the way we're programmed. And Allah programmed us that way so that we would complain and turn to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the prophets did it. Zakariya alayhi salam when he's when he's when he's saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa inni wa hana al-'adhmu minni wa ista'ala ar-ra'su shayba my bones on the inside have been completely you know they're decaying they're gone wa hana al-'adhmu wa ista'ala ar-ra'su shayba and the gray hair on my head you see where it is oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's oppressed me it's blowing up literally the word that he uses is the ista'al which means a fire broke out on my head and there is not a single black hair on my head and as Al-Baghawi rahimahullah said, what was Zakariya alayhi salam doing? He's saying, oh Allah, you know my inside and you know my outside. Anta al-ghani wa nahnu al-fuqara'u ilayk. Anta al-qawi wa nahnu al-du'afa. You are the one who is self-sufficient. We are completely in need of you. You are the one who is all bestowed with power and endowed with power. And we are the ones who are completely weak. We could do nothing without you, oh Allah. That way you're not expressing this pleasure with him. But you know what? Someone hears you all the time. And when you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't need anyone else to hear out your problems. You don't need anyone else to listen to your problems. Because you know that you're calling upon the one who doesn't get, who doesn't get saddened whenever you call upon him. You're not going to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know that you're calling upon the one who has your best interests. Who has your best interests as a priority. And at the same time is fully capable of helping you at any time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who turn to Him in our everyday lives with our small problems, our minor problems, and with our harsh problems and major problems and tragedies. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us amongst those who are forbidden from the pleasure and the ladha of turning to Him and making dua and standing in Qiyamul Layl. Allahumma ameen. Akhulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimin. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين ولا عاقبة المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear brothers and sisters a person finds pride only by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person finds true self-worth and security only by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said in the famous statement when he entered into Al-Quds, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ أَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ وَإِنْ أَبْتَغَيْنَ الْعِزَّةَ لِغَيْرِهِ أَذَلَّنَ اللَّهُ We are a people who Allah gave dignity to through Islam. And that statement has so many dimensions. If we seek it through anything else, we will only be humiliated. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only cause us to be amongst those who are humiliated. Whether it is for your emotional needs or your physical needs, try turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consistently or else you will feel the heat of this life because that's how we're programmed. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a constricted life. Life is going to suffocate you. Your job, your relationships, everything is going to feel suffocating because you're eventually going to run out of people to call upon. And eventually the person that you keep on calling, even though he might love you and he might respect you and he might you know, have your best interest interests at heart. Eventually when you keep calling and he keeps picking up the cell phone or she keeps picking up the cell phone and seeing that same name, they're going to start making excuses. You know, put, putting out the paper bag and go, I'm busy, I'm in a halaqa. They might even start lying to say, I don't want to talk to you right now. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's both capable and willing to help you at any time. And think about this, and Imam Al-Qayyim Rahimullah says, and I'll end with this. In this life, you'll find someone who's capable of helping you, but he won't be willing to help you. Right? There are people that are multi, multi, multi millionaires, and I don't care what kind of financial hardship you're going, going through. You could go to that person, if they wrote you a check, it wouldn't affect them much. They wrote you a check, they could take care of you for the next 10 years. You never have to worry about your financial troubles again, but they're not willing to help you. And there are some people that are always willing to help you, but they're not capable of helping you, right? Your mother loves you. Your mother wants you to be a rich person. Your mother wants you to have everything in life. Your mother wants you to be the president, to be this and to be that. But she won't be capable of giving it to you. But Allah is both willing and capable at all times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unlike people who get upset when you keep on calling them, مَن لَا يَسْأَلِ اللَّهِ يَلْضَبُ عَلَيْهِ The Prophet says, whoever doesn't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with him for not asking of, for not asking of him. So develop that relationship, strengthen that relationship, direct your concerns towards him. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make, make a way out for you. As Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah says, إِنَّ الْوُقُوفَ عَلَى الْأَبْوَابِ حِرْمَانُ To stand at the doors of people is a way of forbidding yourself. Right? It's a way of depriving yourself. And he says, rahimahullah ta'ala, إِنَّ الْوُقُوفَ عَلَى الْأَبْوَابِ حِرْمَانُ وَالْعَجْزُ أَنْ يَرْجُوَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنسَانَ And disability and laziness and incapability is that a human being needs another human being. فَمَتَى تُؤَمِّنُ مَخْلُوقًا وَتَقْصُدَهُ So when do you put all of your hope and all of your trust into another created being and expect that he's going to get you out of your situation? إِنْ كَانَ عِنْدَكَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ إِيمَانُ When you have Iman and Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala فَثِقْ بِالَّذِي يُعْطِي ذَا وَيَمْنَعُ ذَا So then put your trust in the one who gives to this one and he forbids this person because at the end of the day وَفِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَانُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning our day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr is precise and daily. And, 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 and as he said رحمه الله تعالى that whoever has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for him. We ask Allah to bless us with his pleasure, with his rida, with his love. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor us, to be able to wake up and pray Qiyamul Layl and to call upon him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to direct our needs towards him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to put us at the mercy of any human being. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma khfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat Allahumma khfir lana wa rahamna wa afu anna wa la tu'adhibna Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa inlam takhfir lana وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لي والدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربنا سيغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر المستضعفين في الشام اللهم انصر المستضعفين والمجاهدين في الشام اللهم أصلح أحوال إخواننا المنكوبين في الشام اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة